Due to a technical oversight, the recorder was not activated until approximately a minute and a half into the meeting. During this time, the roll call confirmed commissioners present and agenda item B1 was open for discussion. Mr. Stiles addressed the commission stating the Arizona Racing Commission approved the advanced deposit wagering agreement between Rideau Park and Churchill Downs doing business as Twin Spires at its March 8, 2018 meeting. To date, Twin Spires has paid Rideau Racetrack source market fees from March 9, 2018 through June 30, 2018. However, Rideau Racetrack management has not distributed the fees to other permittees, which is required by law. Jay Wells approached the Commission and addressed them, verbalizing an informal protest to the wording of the agenda subject in this matter. At this point, the recorder is working. Today is Thursday, July 12, 2018. This is a special meeting of the Arizona Racing Commission meeting held at 1110 West Washington, Suite 250, Phoenix, Arizona, 85007. All the wagering in Arizona besides Pima County, so they, then they isolated Pima County in a second report. We had a hard time getting Churchill Downs to do the same for Maricopa County. Uh, that uh, zip code list was presented to them over 60 days ago, and uh, we just literally on the 26th of June received that report. So we do have the figure to debate. Uh, I think I provided that to everyone involved. Uh, so we, and I brought a copy of that today. And if I may, I'll hand that a copy to you. I think you've got one for your email. The big debate is really, uh, what's the formula? And uh, the, our attorney, unfortunately, could not be here today, but he did give me some information that I think uh, sort of helps. And to refresh your memory, Turf Paradise is taking, it was taking the, the uh, position that we were not even eligible to have this contract. They've since dropped that. So they now recognize that the, uh, the debate between attorneys, etc., they do recognize that we do have the right to have this contract. So now the only issue is how to pay it and what percentage to pay. There's two things in the law in the uh, 5112. One says, uh, item M, it says, an advanced deposit, deposit wagering provider that the commission approves shall pay source market fees on wagers placed on horse racing in this state to commercial live horse racing permittees in this state. The advanced deposit wagering provider shall divide the source market fees on horse racing wagers on the basis of the proportion of the permittees total live and simulcast handle during the previous year, and the advanced deposit wagering provider shall pay source market fees on wagers with dog racing from that county in which the live or simulcast racing is conducted in commercial live racing permittee in that county. Basically what that means is, and this is Turf Paradise's position in negotiations, that they want to have their figure of $250 plus million dollars prorated to, in comparison to our $1.5 million. So basically we would get less than 1% of the funds that would be generated in Maricopa County, even though we're the administrator of the contract. We take the position that the latter, the second thing, where it says later on, it says in N4, advanced deposit wagering agreements that are executed between permittees in the state must contain the same or substantially equivalent terms and conditions, including provisions for revenue sharing. It's very important as the terms and conditions contained in simulcast agreements that are executed between those same permittees in order to accept advanced deposit wagering or horse racing from a county where the commercial dog racing permittee, meaning the county. Basically what that's saying is, since we have an existing OTB contract, that that formula and that, and that algebra should calculate exactly what that payment may be. Our attorney did send me a list, and forgive me because I'm not an attorney, but I will try to, to articulate this as best I can. But anyway, of these two, that's the big debate. Are we taking one, less than 1% or what, uh, uh, what is in Pima County? We get 8.75% for all the wagering in Pima County from Express Bet uh, and uh, the other uh, uh, TVG. So basically, we're getting right now 8.75% of Pima County's wagering. So if you take the latter tr uh, translation, then you would say that they would get 8.75% of the Maricopa handle. The, the attorney explained to me, and, and please, if counsel will weigh in or however you may advise on, on if, I, if I get something wrong, but in essence, there's a legislative precedent for the way that this is read. The original uh, uh, 
the, the, the prior articulation basically says of the, of the less than 1% was what's called a general provision or general statute. The latter comes further down in the law, in the statute, and it basically is a clarification or adding specificity to it. And so they basically say, hey, but however, if you've got an OTB contract with someone, that formula should be what's mirrored. There's a legislative uh, precedent for this as well, or history, in the sense that that language was added by Senator Steve Pierce further down the line of the legislative process. So the first was already articulated and written into the statute, and then he came back and amended it to say, yes, indeed, that this is a situation where there's a county that has a commercial dog racing contract, meaning Pima County, and so therefore the OTB contract should be, indeed, what should be articulated. This is what we've offered to Turf Paradise since day one. They have never had a counter. We've had a meeting with Jerry Sims, uh, I believe someone from the HBPA, the, the president was there, and uh, chairman, I mean, and he, and he was in the meeting, and they were just not obliged from that. So we've offered our position, they've offered their position, and we were at loggerheads. Just simply that, so that's what's held up the payment. What what would be the difference in the amounts? Well, let's in see. Dollar, in dollars. Let's see. In, in, in the two? Yeah. One would basically mean that Maricopa County, would, uh, the Turf Paradise, I can give you exact figures, actually. So that makes reports. I, I don't know. What so so let, let me let me just go over the Maricopa handle uh, first. So of of the wagering in the month of March that was prorated from March 9th until uh, uh, the the end of March, there was one hundred three thousand dollars of Maricopa can handle out of one hundred forty eight thousand dollars. The Maricopa percentage of that was point seven zero zero three. The source market fee was seven thousand nine forty nine twenty eight. So the Maricopa portion, if articulated one hundred percent at one hundred percent, I want to clarify that would be five thousand five hundred sixty six fifty. If you took the percentage based on their two hundred fifty million compared to our one and a half million, we're talking about less than one percent. That figure is not going to change much. If they calculated it the way that we're calculated on in Pima County, it would be four hundred eighty seven zero four. Dollars to, to, to iterate a little bit about how that works, I'll give you some figures that are actually come from the invoices that we received. So, for example, in March, the total Pima County handle for TVG and Express Bet combined was $85,230. The source market fee was $5,367.15, and we got $469.63. So someone's going to have to explain to me why uh, when Turf Paradise uses that secondary articulation of the law, meaning that if there's an OTB contract, that they did it, and they did do it. And in the meeting, Mr. Sims pointed out, and, and Dave, you may uh, contradict me if you feel like I'm wrong, but he basically pointed out that, oh, they were done that because the department told them they, we had to give it that way in order to get our permission to have the, the ADW broadcast in, in Pima County. Well, isn't that what this is about? Isn't this is about getting permission from, from Maricopa County in order to uh, bring in Churchill Downs? So they're objecting to it. They're the ones that are holding up their permission in order to get this. And, in, and instead of interpreting the way that they interpret it and the way that they have consistently paid us since the inception of the law, they now want to change it to a formula that greatly shifts the money away from them. Someone's got to explain to me what the apples and apples difference is. If they, it just does not make sense. So we're urging the commission to, to look at it and just ask for parity. All we have ever asked the Rito is a level playing field. And it seems like every turn of events, whatever's the, whatever can short... Short uh, Rito and some sort of fund, funding or ability to generate waging, wagering, etc. We get cut out, and we're asking you to step up. I am the first to recognize that uh, the fact that we have to get you guys to weigh in on this is just a travesty. It's an indication of uh, how difficult it has been to to uh, negotiate with Turf Paradise. But I would like to close on a high note. Uh, Friday, Vince and I had lunch together, the first time that uh, we've always been friendly to one another in conversation and telephone calls, and we decided that uh, a lunch was long overdue. Uh, I think we both recognize that there's a lot of heartstrings for Rito. Uh, I think we both recognize that for the good of the industry, 
we do need to rise above this. Uh, I had uh, offered a compromise solution at that uh, party, and he closed the at that luncheon, and he closed with asking, "Would I take a call from Mr. Sims?" For the record, I have not received that call from Mr. Sims, but I am willing and and uh, and open to any consideration for compromise. But I will say that the way that the ADW interpretation of the statute has been calculated before we ever got into the Churchill contract should be the status quo. And all I'm asking you to do is to hold up to the status quo and recognize that, that if they indeed are paying us 8.75% for wagering in Pima County, ergo, would it not be uh, fair to interpret that that should be the same for Maricopa? And if not, please explain why. Thank you. Any questions? Not right now. I have a question for uh, Gregor Reed. I, I have a question for Jay. Okay. Jay, can you share with us what that compromise was uh, that was presented to Vince in the lunch? Yes. Uh, we we recognize that uh, that uh, you know we recognize what we are and that that this is a uh, a purse issue more than anything else. And that we, we had articulated the HP pay early on that even though we accepted a lower uh, percentage than what Turf Paradise has offered, that we would not live by the 50-50 statute, meaning that 50% would be applied to purses uh, uh, and 50% applied to operations. And so we, had, we recognized that if, if what we would do would be carve out the purse portion of the calculation for uh, Turf, Turf Paradise in Maricopa County, so that the 8.75% is roughly what uh, we're getting. We're in Pima County, they are getting roughly 31 and a half, I don't remember the exact percentage of the total uh, of amount of money to go to operation. So we offered them that amount of money uh, to go back into Maricopa County to uh, uh, parse that way. So instead of getting 8.75%, they would get 31%. We did, I have not heard back about that, and again, don't hold me to that 31% because I'm, I'm not privy to the exact calculation, because the dog track is also taking a portion. In fact, that just as an aside, the dog track gets three times the amount of the ADW payment that Rito does in Pima County, and to me, I just, again, I go back to the why, why, why uh, does this always happen to us? Uh, that offer was made on the table. As I said, I have not heard back from Mr. Sims uh, to whether he would even entertain it, or I'm, I'm not even uh, positive that it was uh, Vince was able to communicate to him. So I'll leave that for, for Vince to, to uh, uh, explain and, and respond to. Uh, but the point being is, we are are offered open and offering to a compromise. We compromised with the HBPA, telling them that we would shift the 50-50 so that the calculation that they would get based on the other percentages would still be what would be earned back in purse monies. Uh, we're all about purse monies. We're all about purse monies. And then now we've made a secondary gesture to, to uh, Turf Paradise to open it. And, and we keep putting out the olive branch. And I think it's time that, that the, the, unfortunately, the commission has got to weigh in and deal with a level playing field on this because we just cannot come to a resolution. Uh, we are certainly willing to, and uh, uh, I hope I answered your, your question. Uh, you, you did, and, and obviously we'd love to see a level playing field, but it, it all has to be you know, within the law. Uh, let, let me ask one question. Uh, so far, what is the total dollars you have collected from Twin Spires? What's in the account right now? Uh, let me I have to do some quick math. There was 7949 that we were paid, earned, and collected uh, for March. Uh, there was 108345 for April, so we're at about eighteen grand. Uh, they then did a separate invoice from May 1st till May 5th, basically because of the Derby signal. Uh, that added up to another 3791 and that is all that we have collected, so a little over $20,000. We agreed to escrow half of that into our horseman's account, even though this was not a horseman's issue, but they asked for an escrow, and so... Uh, in consideration with Leroy and everyone, we agreed that that would do. And so we have set aside those funds. They exist right now. We have not touched them uh, in our horseman's account. As a matter of fact, I brought a check today. Uh, we are anxious to get this resolved. 
There's an additional 12,257 for the balance of May uh, that uh, has not been collected as of, as of today. And uh, uh, I have not received the June report, other than the fact that he gave me a broken down report to er, June, I believe it was 20, 26th of June. I uh, did not include the, because just to demonstrate that he could figure out what the Maricopa uh, handle by day was. So I think we've got the statistics coming in, and in, in. now uh, Churchill has assured our bookkeeper that the wire transfer is forthcoming. Uh, they apologize for the delays, but this business with trying to reset them with the text and as busy as I'm sure they were during the month of May, that delayed things. Uh, but we're not talking about a lot of money uh, in the big picture of things, certainly when you compare it to the $250 million that Turf Paradise enjoys because they basically run every betting operation in the state, uh, uh, as, as we currently said. Until this morning, huh? <laughs> they, I think they're opening up their simulcast center today, so that'll be good news. Uh, yeah, but fine. Uh, but we just do believe that uh, fairness is fairness. If the law uh, has been interpreted in the way that we're urging for you guys to interpret it, that secondary statute that is more of a uh, specific, specific statute, and I will, uh, would ask your, to encourage you to enter an executive session to get clarification from the AG's office. But in any event, we just think what's fair is fair. If they're paying us that using that formula, shouldn't it be reciprocal? It's that simple. And if it isn't that simple, tell me why there's some special privilege that they should use the general provision to get where we get less than 1%. Less than 1% would be would be less than $100 <laughs> out of the wagering. I mean, it's just, uh, this is an example of how imbalanced our, our state statutes are and, and they need to be reworked. I don't know what it is. Any other questions, gentlemen? I'd like to hear Turf's Thank you for your consideration. Yeah. I'm here to respond. Thanks, Jay. I'd like, Same to, here. I'd like to hear what the department has to say about this. Well, let Vince go okay. first. And we might have to go into executive session. Vince? Uh, for the record, Vincent Francia, you know, uh, general manager of uh, Turf Paradise, uh, chairman of the Clinton Commissioners, and director of uh, First of all, thank you for agendizing this item item and hopefully a resolution can be uh, reached today so that we might go forward. <coughs> Excuse me, I'll Vince, you. could you speak up just a little bit, please? Yes, yes, indeed. I, I will do that. Thank, thank you. Uh, let me start on a high note. The lunch I had with uh, Jay Wells was a good lunch. The primary subject of, of the lunch uh, was uh, uh, Turf Paradise uh, possibly taking over the operations of Rodeo Park. Uh, we understand. Can you hear me as louder? Who was that? I'm Just sorry. Jerry. Um, this is Mr. Sims. Yeah, maybe Vince could move a little closer to the phones. Um, he's on a microphone, and if okay. he keeps adjusting it, it's going to distort everything in the room because they're extremely sensitive. So I don't have an answer as far as on how to make him any louder. We can hear Jay very clearly. Uh, um, anyway, Jay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yeah, I'm right. speaking up. Uh, in a louder voice. Uh, you have to pardon me somewhat. I'm coming off the effects of uh, anesthesia from eye surgery. But let me raise my voice and uh, we'll see if we can get clarity here. To continue, the primary subject of the conversation, uh, the luncheon with uh, Mr. Wells, was Rito. Oh, that's, that's okay. Was uh, uh, Turf Paradise taking over the operation of uh, Reedo Park for its race meet? Uh, it, it was very clear from Mr. Wells' part that uh, he was looking for stability for that racetrack down there, uh, and secondly, that there would be uh, a future for it. Uh, we came to no conclusions, but it was a very good discussion. Uh, Mr. Wells knows of my background with uh, Reedo having opened that track after it was dark for uh, seven years and everything that uh, we went through to get it back open. 
and I currently do have a fondness for Rio. And uh, up until that point, Mr. Wells did, did not want to meet with Mr. Sims, which is why I was there by myself. But now that it's been stated that he's willing to talk with Mr. Sims, uh, I'll have Mr. Sims call him. I did brief Mr. Sims on the meeting. Our presentation today uh, uh, is simple, uh, but I wish to make clear right from the get-go, because I think it's germane uh, to what we are discussing today, and that is, this is not what Turf Paradise wants, it's what the law says should apply in a particular situation. And um, we're referencing 5.1.12.M as to how this, hand, how this matter should be handled should it come up. Now, arguably, racing is probably the most regulated uh, business uh, in this state, and there's reason for that, because there's integrity issues with the state, with the horsemen, with our product, the sport, and of course with the horse players. Thus, we have all these regulations uh, to govern us, and sometimes they apply to relationships between permittees. And what exactly is the law that we are referring to? In 5.1.12.M, it states very clearly, it's not ambiguous, that the advanced deposit wagering provider shall divide the source market fees on horse racing wagers on the basis of the proportion of the permittees, plural, permittees, total live and simulcast handle during the previous year. Now, this is not a turf paradise statute, this is a state statute, one which governs all of us, including all of the permittees uh, in the state, and that is what we are uh, referencing to. Um, to date, uh, permission is required from one county to another when this type of activity is taking place. We have not given consent for them to come into um, Maricopa County as we have to gain consent to go into Pima County. And secondly, since March 9th, when the uh, uh, arrangement was uh, engendered between Twin Spires and Rito Park, Turf Paradise, we have not, and by we, I mean Turf Paradise, the racetrack, and our horsemen have not received any payment. That payment, we believe, should be predicated on what the law says in these particular situations apply. So what is it we really want? What are we asking for? Uh, what Turf is asking for is one, documentation from Twin Spires. The reason why we are requesting this is because they are the sole source of exactly how much revenue has been generated by the provider system in the state. Uh, documents from Twin Spires, specifically their financial backup as to how much business uh, they've done since March 9th and going forward. The second thing we're asking for is that TERF be paid according to the law which governs this matter, and that is 5-112M, specifically that the advanced deposit wagering provider shall divide the source of market fees on horse racing wagers on the basis of the proportion of the permit tees, again plural, total live and simulcast handle during the previous year. We are basing our request on the laws which govern us and which we are supposed to follow. This concludes my portion of the presentation, but I'm going to have to, Dave Johnson step to the uh, podium. Could, could, I make one, could I make one comment of explanation, please, Mr. Jerry Sims? Sure. When this law was put in, I was there part of it, working on the law uh, with John Mangum at the time. And I can tell you clearly the reason it was put in with those proportions. The reason it was put in in those kind of proportions is the feeling of everybody was that if we lose business to account wagers, we will most likely lose it in proportion to our hands. If we are operating the track all year long as OTC and 130 to, in those days, 100. 
six days racing, 132 racing now, and 55 or so uh, off-track betting sites. The feeling is that we would be impacted enormously more than in the case of Rialito, where they run 12 days of racing in one location. We would get enormously hit, we would be enormously hit harder by account matrix. They would take more of our customers by multitudes of multitudes than how many might have left 12 days of racing and really to. That was the reasoning behind it and why we put it that way. Thank you. Again, uh, Commissioner, thank you for agendizing this item and so the resolution might be reached. Let me have Dave Johnson come to the podium. Sure. Chairman, Chairman, members of the Commission, for the record, my name is David Johnson. I'm the Assistant General Manager at Turf Paradise. And I can't reiterate enough uh, as to what Jerry just said. Jay asked why. Well, Jerry kind of stole my thunder there, but that, that is why, because we are going to be mostly impacted. He asked why Tucson Greyhound Park uh, should get a portion of the handle. Well, Tucson Greyhound Park has an OTB network that is also impacted. That's why these laws were put in. That's why the dome laws were put in. Jay's going to, you know, he, he tried to tell you that this obscure law that uh, actually is a subparagraph of how the, the commission grants advanced deposit wagering permits, that this should supersede uh, the law that, that tells how ADW providers are supposed to pay source market fees. Don't be confused. This, you know, I'm sorry. This law that they're telling you is a law that was specific to a county where there's a simulcast agreement with a dog permit team. Okay, why should this automatically be receptible? There is no dog permit team in Maricopa County. These laws were passed in 2014. Phoenix Greyhound Park ceased operations in 2009. Okay, in essence, this law is a law that was put in place to protect Tucson Greyhound Park and nothing else. So, you know, <clears throat> to just automatically assume that this should be reciprocal. It, it doesn't make any sense. This law is put in place to protect Tucson Greyhound Park because it was a special dome law. It's one of those special dome laws and nothing else. This cannot apply to Turk Paradise. It cannot apply to Maricopa County. There's no way it can apply. There is, like I said, there is no dog racing permittee in Maricopa County. And there certainly isn't uh, that agreement in place. Yeah, I mean, you, you can look at this, and I, I think it's a stretch anyways, because if you even read the law, you know, let's read it slowly. Advanced deposit wagering agreements that are executed between permittees in the state. Well, I, I hate to tell you this, we don't have an advanced deposit wagering agreement executed between permittees here. None of that, that would require a permittee to be an advanced deposit wagering provider. Th this doesn't even apply. But this was put in place to protect Tucson Greyhound Park and only to some Greyhound Park because it was a dome law. And to automatically assume that this should be reciprocal and applied to Maricopa County, it, it doesn't make any sense. It, it, it can't. That's it. Thanks, Dave. <clears throat> Anybody? <clears throat> any questions for Dave? May I have a report? Once again, I don't think anybody ever dreamed we would get this contract. They just discounted the opportunity for Rito to ever get involved in the ADW uh, wagering that they just, when they were, were literally designing this legislation to give them an advantage, uh, they wrote it so that they would get this uh, super angle, or whatever you want to call it. If you remember, our attorney uh, uh, articulated and, and, and argued in the last, the ability to hire our contract when they, it clearly says in the statutes that you can't have an ADW contract unless you run 14, uh, a minimum of 40 days for 12 years or whatever that was, and they deemed that, and you guys, it was all basically, they have now agreed that that constituted special law. It gives an unfair advantage to someone. 
Uh, I also want to close on saying that, you know, we didn't reach out to Churchill Downs. They got so angry with Turf Paradise and made the statement they, they specifically would never do business with Jerry Sims. So if we take them at their word, uh, I think it was expressed to us. I think it was expressed by a legal uh, guestman at some particular point. And, and uh, uh, if that's the case, they're not going to go take it back to... to uh, Jerry, yeah, Jerry, Jerry but, you'll get a chance. Yeah, let him they're, they're not going to take it back to, to Turf Paradise. And so it's just going to disappear. But this is, again, the case where the law specifically gives some specificity for this reciprocal relationship. If there is an OTB contract in place, that will be the template for the formula. That's the template for the formula. And I can only just, again, encourage you to, to go into executive session, ask for counsel. There are no attorneys here before you today. I'm not an attorney. I don't know. It is confusing as hell. It really is. But what I do know is what's good for the goose is good for the gander. This is a situation where Turf has been interpreting the law for their benefit to, 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 to pay us the way that, that they initially to get our permission. Because they knew they were going to get it if all we got was $75.86. <laughs> so, come on, it's laughable. It's laughable. And we're not suggesting that. We could take the position that, oh well, let's let's go back and we'll, you know, we'll do the, the handle out the, the reverse way and get it back to 8.75%. We've made a compromise gesture to Turf Paradise that we think is more than fair. We recognize that we only run 12. We run less than 10% of the days that Turf Paradise, but that's not because of our desire. We, we recognize that we, we, they're getting all of the, the handle and it will hurt their handle. Well, we can't participate in it. The law, we're the only county in the state prevented from having wagering. We can't even have a simulcast parlor at our own racetrack unless we run 140 live race days. No other county in this state has that restriction. This is where it's been lobbied to the point to where once we came along and we get a commercial uh, permit and we abide by the rules, we you know we do our audit, we do pay our taxes, we're all the, all of the regulations that are in the statutes we have to follow, and yet we're not allowed to participate in some of the upside legislation that would allow us to expand our revenue market. This is blatantly unfair, blatantly unfair. It is not a commission issue; it's a legislative issue. It, and so we do hope that, that we will address that in a compromise of the situation. I'll, I'll give you one other example that does deal with the department, that, that it just basically shows what an unfair disadvantage Rito is. We had a horse chiropractor ask for a, a permit to, to come in, a license to come in and massage horses during our 12-day meet. The fee was $550. Well, if you paid $550 and you had 130-plus days to exercise that ability to do it and you amortize it over that, it's a pretty cheap permit. In fact, you guys ought to raise it. But for us, it just works in the reverse. She just said, how in the hell am I going to pay $550 to get in and work for 12 days or six weeks, whatever it is. I mean, clearly not just doing it on race days, but our short meet. And this is the imperity that exists in these statutes. Uh, we're not asking you to change the statutes. We're not asking today to do anything other than read the statutes the way that they're written. Vince got up here and read M. He didn't bother to read M. Uh, uh, they didn't either. Uh, but those laws exist. That specificity, it was put in place. If they want to say it's to protect the dog track, well, wasn't that a Pima County permit tee? So ergo, we would participate equally. We're getting 8.75%. They should get 8.75%. If you read it in a black and white, but it is it, it is not a black and white issue. We recognize that. I regret that this has got to come before you today. Uh, this is something that we have tried like crazy to to reach a compromise on. We are always willing to do so, uh, but we keep running against the brick wall. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. Jerry. No, thank you. Uh, you know, Jay, some of your arguments you tried going in the legislature. Uh, this, we, we only dropped 40 days of uh, rule. That, we didn't drop it for any reason. We still believe 100% that's accurate, that you have to run 40 days during all those years made. But we tried to make it simple for the commission. When I saw the poll holding he was putting with all this constitutional rights and all that, he said, oh, it, 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 it's only a year, and let it go. And we'll provide the money. But let me tell you something. Um, uh, this is really clear. And 
I want to speak up in particular is when you said the Churchill Downs got, and said they didn't want to do business with me. What happened, just to explain what that was about, is they walked into a number of states and done business without the agreement of those states. Lenroy will tell you in his state, his state can't afford to defend it, and they walked in. They walked into Nebraska without having a horseman's agreement. They went into Texas, and they got stopped and had a two-year lawsuit, and Churchill Downs is out of uh, with their account matrix out of Texas. So when I spoke to the gentleman from Churchill Downs, I asked him, as long as they're a public company and traded on the stock exchange, I said, well, why doesn't someone just go to the SEC? They can't violate those laws. And Mr. Mayor was there on the, on the phone with me. He can attest to how angry, how angry, and how his voice raised and what he had to say when I brought that up. But you can't walk into states without contracts and just bully your way like Churchill did. Going back to this, the law is very clear. The other one only referred to the situation that protected when under the dome and was done for the benefit of Tucson Greyhound Park at the time I was there. And it had nothing to do with this. I'm done. Thank you for listening. Thanks. Well, Again, Jay Wells with Vito Park. Uh, ju just as a slight rebuttal, I mean, he ju you just heard him say it was done for the benefit of Tucson Greyhound Park. That is, in its essence, the definition of special law. And, you know, it is just... I, I, the, the, the second thing, Jerry, I would like to respond to your comment is if, if you're doing the, all of these things to, uh, and the gesture to come and, and operate Vito Park to help us out and all that, just throw us a bone. We we're talking about a hundred thousand dollars out of the some twenty million dollars that are that are, that are derived in, in uh, wagering through the state that we don't get a chance to participate in. Then throw us a bone. If you want to help us out, demonstrate it. But this is not shouldn't be a feud between us, and it shouldn't be before the commission. And 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 we constantly we constantly reach out, and, and yet it's just like, well, yeah, that wasn't done. Rito wasn't really considered. It was done for Tucson Greyhound Park, taking horse racing legislation and manipulating it so it benefits Tucson Greyhound Park is the is the status quo, and that is coming to an end. And we are going to be the collateral damage uh, from how this is all being interpreted. We're asking for this contract to be be reciprocal, be interpreted the way that the law states. Again, I think you're in executive sessions. You can get some legal advice on this, and. Uh, uh, you know, Jerry, it's a shame uh, that this, is, this has come down to this, but it has. And we didn't ask for it to be on the agenda. We've not heard back from you. Uh, uh, but it's time to get it over with because, you know, guys, <clears throat> either take us off life support system and let us thrive or, you know, pull the plug. Jay, i got to respond to that. Just if I may take one moment to respond. The first chapter of the market, the 8% pay them on those other contracts it has nothing to do with this issue. We were required and are required to get the permission from the permittees in Pima County in order to show have those events take their on account wager. That is apples and oranges. They have still not come up and asked us. That would be analogous to asking us come into Pima County and what price they would pay. That what they would pay us to come into Pima County as we pay them. That would be analogous. But this, what they're talking about, they never even come up and ask us. They're taking bids as we sit here in Maricopa County and have not gotten Turf Paradise's approval nor the horse's approval. They just did it. Well, and of course, your comments, Jay, on helping uh, Pima County. My job, and we, we sat down and talked to you, and Mr. Mayor communicated back some things that were not attractive. And so I won't, uh, unless you want me to, uh, they have nothing to do with why we're here today. So what you were asking for was just 
over the top. And, and I don't just mean with this settlement, I'm talking about that you wanted us to come in and run real you know, I thought we would be helping by coming in and taking over your baby and giving it some solid financial basis. You took it as an opportunity and, uh, and I, I thought you just wanted to have horse racing and, and be able to pay the horses. So that was my intent. Thank you for listening. So, Commissioner Gray, I do have a question. I keep hearing a, a third party named Tucson Greyhound Park, and my question is, whatever decision we come up with, what impact is that on them, and do they have a say in having some discussion here? No. And, and the FI, I guess. Yeah, uh, no, they don't. This, this is, um, this is the Greyhound Park Of that we have no right to do it it's a county owned property um, there's no nothing in our operating agreement with Pima County uh, uh, to run the to, to, to do anything in any county park you have to be a nonprofit and uh, so our nonprofit is set up strictly to preserve racing and, and keep it going and, and we just need enough monies to survive uh, that's all we've ever asked for we're not asking to, to run 100 days or anything kind of crazy like that but I do want us to, uh, to clarify one thing uh, he is right. At the end of December, we were collateral damage in, in the HBPA and, and uh, Turf Paradise's efforts to get the dog track closed down uh, uh, and out of live racing. They did. They are going to sunset the dome rule, and we were collateral damage because the, the dome rule was put in to protect us, specifically the permittees in Pima County, from having larger tracks, which at the time was only Turf Paradise. And this was before Mr. Sims' time. I mean, this is not something that, that, that he manipulated or, or shepherded in. Uh, but that does expire, meaning that uh, there will not be, by state law, uh, required permission for uh, Turf Paradise to come in, or you have a pipe for that matter, to come in and open parlors. However, federal law, uh, the Interstate Course Racing Act, does specifically say that any operating track that ha it, it has a right for a 60 mile radius of protection, so no other entity can come in and open up a parlor within 60 uh, mile radius, which in our case, would get us to Casa Grande, down to Sonoida. It gets us out of Pima County, where right now that state law specifically keeps the border of that uh, protection or dome rule, whatever you want to call it, uh, by, the, by the county's uh, uh, lines. But that 60-mile uh, radius is a, a state law, and one of the stat excuse me, a federal law, and one of the statutes that, that is in the, the uh, state law says that all laws... Um, uh, for the state shall comply with the Interstate Horse Racing Act. So it's iterated again in there that that that, that, that is indeed uh, recognized as federal law, federal law which, which supersedes state law. Well, you never want to tell a congressman or a senator at the state level that. But the point being is we do believe that protection still stands there. And uh, there will, I'm sure, be test cases where they try to come in and open up a parlor, but we will uh, defend our territory you know, we're, we have to. We have to. We're not given the opportunity to participate uh, on the upside of racing that our commercial permittees uh, that exist in the state have. We are literally locked out 
because of the way the laws have been manipulated uh, over. And now that they're trying to eliminate the dog track and, and, and appear to have succeeded in doing so, uh, that they'll go out of business. And uh, so they're just saying, hey, let's come take all of Pima County. You won't get any ADW money. You won't get any parlor money. You All of our backyard, our entire market, of Pima County that falls inside that 60 mile radius in parts of, of Santa Cruz and the Pinal County. I mean, that's the a sixth of the state population. Jay, excuse me, we're way off topic, but you're just holding the ball. Well, I, 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 I did. But the 60 mile yeah. radius is only during the days that you operate or that I operate and you can And you won't operate during the 12 days that we're running the 60 miles, and you won't operate or let Yavapai come in and have parlors and operate while you're running your 130 days? I mean, you keep taking these, these laws and skewing it. Okay, this, I don't think we have a forum, yeah, for this argument. You guys, I don't know whether you can work your problems out or not, but uh, this isn't the forum to do it. I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Okay. Okay. Uh, on a roll call on that, Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Heupel? Yes. Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Okay, this first session of the Special Racing Commission meeting is adjourned at 9.49. Please clear the room. <laughs> Following is the second open session of the Special Arizona Racing Commission meeting held on July 12, 2018 at 1110 West Washington Suite 250. Okay, sir, we're ready, and I will... Let you know it is at 10.21 a.m. and we are beginning the second session. Roll call is Commissioner Garay. Here. Commissioner Heupel. Here. Commissioner Lawless. Here. Commissioner McClintock. Here. Thank you. We're all present. And on the phone is Commissioners Garay and Heupel. Thank you. Okay. What I think we need to do first is go to old business item number one, the reconsideration of advanced deposit wagering agreement between Reedo Park and Twin Spires. And I'd kind of like to have the horsemen weigh in on this if they're willing to. Uh, so, Lloyd and Leroy, you guys fight over who gets to address this issue. Chairman McClintock, Commissioners, Director Leroy Gessman, uh, Arizona HBPA. Uh, I don't know what you want me to weigh in on. I can't make your decision for you, but uh, you know we uh, we represent the horsemen in both Rito and the horsemen uh, at Turf Paradise, and we will be representing the horsemen up at uh, Arizona Downs. And uh, well, let me. We, we have one big pie, and somehow it's my specific. Be divided up. My, my specific question is: You guys supported this when we approved it. Do you still support it? That's really all I want. Yeah, to know. we haven't changed our opinion. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to know. So, based on that, uh, do we need to vote on whether to continue to approve? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's all. I want. So. We would need a motion, a second, and then a vote. Okay. So I would entertain a motion to approve the advanced deposit wagering agreement between Rieto and Twin Spire. So moved. And do I have a second? Second. Okay. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Heupel? Yes. Commissioner Lawless? Yes. 
Commissioner McClintock. Yes. Okay. okay, the motion carries. So we have that agreement. Now, we're going to kick the can a little bit down the road. We're going to ask you guys to come up with an agreement on how you want to split this up. We There's so many laws in play here. There's federal law, state law, two different state laws that we can't really get our arms around what law applies. So instead of fighting this out, I'd like for Rito and Turf Paradise to work together and come up with an agreement. If that's not going to work, we're going to appoint a mediator to help you guys come up with an agreement. If that doesn't work out, you guys can go to court and fight this out. But uh, there's too much, I mean, this is a question that if you answer it strictly by the law, it looks like it comes out one way. If you answer it in the best interest of horse racing, it looks like it might swim a different way. So we'd like for you guys to do something in the best interest of horse racing in the state of Arizona for a change. Amy, we need a motion on that. Um, probably a motion to table okay. based on the directive. that direction. And put a time. Yeah. Okay, so we need a motion then um, to either table it or to do your directive, and um, you had mentioned time limit as well as the mediator um, the expense. Okay. We saw. Well, I'd like to entertain a motion to give the two parties 15 days to come up with a solution to this problem that makes them both happy. Uh, if in 15 days you guys can't come to some kind of agreement, we're going to appoint a mediator that would be at your own expense, and uh, we'll let, try to work it out that way. And if that doesn't work out, then we'll make a ruling. Which one or both of the parties probably won't like, so we encourage you to uh, work it out. So who makes that motion? Is that you, Mr. Lawless? Yeah. No, no, I'm sorry. We're in the middle. It's okay. closed. So do I have a, that motion was I, by? I would move to table, give the parties 15 days to work it out. If that doesn't happen, we will appoint a mediator to help you work it out. And if that doesn't work out, then we will rule. But again, there's two competing statutes. It's is clear as mud, and one one or probably both of you will not like our ruling. So we encourage you to work it out. Okay, do I have a is, second? Does day one start tomorrow? Yeah. And who's my second on that? I'll second it. Thank Commissioner you, Mr. Gray. Thank you, Mr. Gray. So, uh, Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Heifel? Yes. Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Okay, motion carries. So. Okay. So, thank you, everybody. That's from Jerry. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. So, the new business item number two Turf Paradise Race Course Temporary Permit, approval of days per attached schedule. Any questions on that? I think Greg has recommended approval of the temporary permit. Right. They have uh, put in their application on May 30th of 2018. We are currently in the substantive stage of that uh, application. Uh, the live racing dates are from October 13th through May 5th of 2019, if I'm correct. Um, and we would definitely recommend approval for the temporary permit so they can have their race days. And this is for 2019, 20, and 21 temporary permit? That's correct. I don't see the 21. I just see the 
19 and 20. Right, we're gotcha. just approving the dates at this point for okay. 19. Okay, gotcha. <coughs> I move we approve the temporary permit and we also approve the live race dates. Should I do this all in one motion? Yeah. Okay. Um, the 2018 2019 race meet dates go from October 13th through May 5th for a total of 131 live days. The live race dates for 2019-2020 race meet go from October 12th, 2019 to May 3rd, 2020 for a total of 132 live race dates. And I move we approve both the permit and the live race dates. Do I have a second? second thank you. So moved, Commissioner Gray. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Gray. Yes. Commissioner Heifel. Yes. Commissioner Lawless. Yes. Commissioner McClintock. Yes. Motion carries. Okay, item number three: the approval of new general manager for American Gray Alleys. You, were, you may remember that in 2017, Ed Bronger had retired and uh, AGP had um, brought in Brad Bryant for a, a period of time. Uh, Brad went on um, to accept another position. The new uh, general manager is uh, comes to us from the state of Florida, Aaron Feinberg. Uh, he's put in his key person application. We've done his background check. Everything fits perfectly. Mm -hmm. He is here today. He wants to uh, introduce himself. But the department does recommend this. Okay, yeah, Mr. Feinberg, I notice you're on the uh, sign-in sheet. So, that's good. Good morning, commissioners, Mr. Chairman, director. Uh, really excited to be in uh, Arizona. Uh, as you know, uh, Mr. Stiles mentioned, came from Florida. Um, I'm a racing guy. My entire life been in paramutual racing. Um, so, really looking forward to working with everyone here and, and along with the permittees, uh, you know, also here. So. Thank you, and uh, look forward to working with everyone. Welcome well, thank to Arizona. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a bad time of the year to show up. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the weather. <laughs> so, uh, do we have a motion to approve that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I move we approve. Second. Second. Thank Second. you. Second. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Heipel? Yeah. Commissioner Lawless? Yes. Commissioner McClintock? Yes. Motion carries. All right. And so now we move on to the uh, summary of current events. Is there anything before the commission that needs to be discussed or action taken on in coming meetings? Other than what we already discussed yeah. today. I, I know it was, um, Greg, uh, earlier in the start of the season, they had talked a little bit about it. I'm sure Greg will eventually bring it up, but I'd like to hear a little more of how the study on uh, reducing uh, the injuries at Turf Paradise, um, what was the end result, and if we got any benefit out of it. Yeah, I can give you some information. We are in the process of putting together a paper. Uh, we're probably about a week away from having that done. Um, okay. We made great strides in um, the institution of what I would call preventative measures. And what I'm specifically referring to is this year was the first time that we had what I would call a um, simplified pre-race examination period. We selected 10 to 15 horses, and again, at Turf Paradise, on any given race day, there are 60 to 80 horses. But we took um, what I would call a pilot program. 10 to 15 horses per day were uh, pre-race examined. Um, every horse that suffered a catastrophic breakdown or a illness-related death was sent to Midwestern University as a um, project for the students to do necropsies on them. We also did, um, on those necropsies, uh, reviews with the trainers, the members of the horsemen, um, members of Turf Paradise's management. So we sat down and we just discussed those, um, you know, incidences, and there was a lot of information that came out of it that we were able to glean. 
Um, this is a long-term project, okay? This is something that um, over the course of time, I think we're going to uh, show good results on. Unfortunately, the number of catastrophic in incidences rose this year, um, and uh, that is unfortunate because nobody likes to see this happen. But we had 50 uh, fatalities through the season. That's at all Arizona racetracks, not just Turf Paradise. But we had fatalities at Rio, and we had one at Sonoida. Um, don't lose hope. Don't lose um, spotlight on what we've done so far, okay? Uh, none of this was happening before as far as the pre-race exams, the necropsies, the um, banning of shockwave theory by the, by the horsemen in Turf Paradise Management. These are all steps that will eventually, I am very confident, that will bring us down to what is the national average for catastrophic breakdowns. And again, nobody likes to see these, but there's a lot of studies, there's a lot of effort nationally, not only in here in the state, that is going through to make this safer, this sport safer. So um, we'll continue to work with that. When the paper is done, we'll distribute it to the commission so they can take a look at it. And I hope in the fall we'll be able to have some type of conversation that we can have uh, regarding the additional steps we're going to take to uh, make horse racing safer in this state. So. Thanks, Grady. Uh, it's my understanding that there was some severe barn damage Monday in the monsoon storms, so I'd like to have Vince kind of give us an update on what happened and what the plan is to rectify that. Uh, to re-identify Vincent Francia as the general manager of Turf Paradise, uh, simple answer to your question, yes. Uh, one of those cells descended on the race course, specifically the uh, stable area, and did quite a bit of damage. Now, uh, I've been back there, and it, it's not the concrete barns, they're, they're very solid, but the, the wire barns with the metal roof, and what the storm did, or the uh, mini cyclone did, is lift them up and bend them back. So I've been back there with staff. Most of them are going to be able to be saved. Uh, that is, they can be uh, uh, righted and the, the tin roofs will have to be replaced. Some of them will have to be replaced uh, altogether. We already made contact with Elrod Fence Company, which is the company uh, uh, that takes care of uh, all of those needs. All of it is correctable uh, in-house. Okay. Yeah. Might be a good opportunity. And we lost a couple Palm trees. Uh, that happened also. Okay. It was pretty fair. Uh, hopefully, the one right by the starting gate on the race. The turf course looks great. Good. I like that. The, the rain helped. Okay. So, uh, are there any matters that need to be placed on future agendas? I'd like to uh, put have you guys entertain a, a, an item. Um, it was mentioned earlier today that on uh, January 1st, the dome over Pima County will go away. And there is becoming an issue with who actually has control of the OTBs that are currently down there. So I have a packet for you gentlemen to take a look at and um, would advise you to... To, uh, to go ahead and take a look at that packet and consider that for a uh, future agenda item. The other thing we'll do is we'll set a meeting within the 15 days um, that uh, you have given the two committees um, to settle their differences. Right. So we'll have that set together as well. A little louder, Greg. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear that. The other, the other item is the 15 days that the commission has given the two parties to work this situation out with the ADWs. We'll have that on the future agenda as well. Tell me about the OTBs down in Tucson again. I couldn't hear that part. With the dome going away in January 1st of 2019, there needs to be an issue with who controls the OTBs down in Tucson. And I've got packets for the commissioners. So, with Greg, will you send that uh, to my home address? Yes, I will. I'm going to be traveling here a bunch next couple months. Thanks. Do we have a copy of it also? 
I can go ahead and give them to the commissioners just to have them take a look at that. Because Jerry, Pass. you must know if you're going to give him a copy. I'd say at this point, probably not. Probably not at this point in time. Okay, so let's move on to the call of the public. I'm going to take a shot at this, Brian. You write worse than I do, but is it Brian Bongard? I'm <laughs> sorry about that. I'm sorry. And I signed in. I came down here to get an education today. Sorry, would you please spell your last name so that I'll have it? O-U-F as in Frank, F as in Frank, A-R-D. Thank you. I came today, made the drive, to get a little education of what you guys are doing here today. From where? A little concerned about what he was talking about the dome going away in Pima County. I own an off track bedding site in Tucson. It's called the Old Father Inn. It's right off the interstate on Ina, which okay. is currently under construction. Um, so I'm here today because it seems like when anything has to do with Tucson and Phoenix, Tucson always goes to, gets the short end of the stick. And I'm hoping that this packet and their 15 day meeting they can agree with on something. I talked to Jerry on the phone twice. And he offered me a choice to pick either dogs or horses. I need both. There's two different groups of people. It's not the same. I can't eliminate one or the other. I would like them to work it out to be able to maintain both of them and not have to make a choice to have one or the other. And they need to work it out. Uh, I talked to him about maybe sharing the teller if they can't work the don't thing out, the cost of the teller. Um, he said he'd be willing to do that. He says that Tucson Ground Park's not cooperating with them, doesn't want me to talk to them. So I think by getting them together and trying to figure it out, what works for everybody. Just looking for something fair. Well, yeah, and, and you know, we don't know what's gonna happen exactly when the dome goes away, but we're obviously gonna study it before the next meeting and uh, well, that's all I'm here. I'd, I'd like for you to be able to make money, you know, if it takes both Saturation and I, I works. Yeah. I mean, if you got the different, the daytime uh, is the horses, the later afternoon, evening is the dogs. That's how it's different groups of people. It's not the same people betting on both. Okay, I've actually been to your facility. It's a nice okay. facility. I've been fixing it up. Okay. Ready for the road to open. All right. <laughs> May I say something? Please. Yes. Alicia Leiser, general manager, Tucson Greyhound Park. One of the reasons this is coming up regarding the OTBs is that Jerry is going to our OTBs already and trying to coach. I'm sorry. I said Jerry is going to our OTBs already and trying to get them to sign up with him, telling them that we're not allowed to have horses next year, that the horsemen have told him that they didn't want us to have the horses and that we weren't going to be able to get a signal. So this is one of the things that I needed to get up here and straighten out to find out if that was true, that the horsemen didn't want to receive 20% of our commission that we get from the horse sales anymore, because um, that would go away if we didn't have the horse signal. Nobody else pays that. You know, as Jay was saying, we get a benefit on things. Well, we also get a detriment that we have to pay that 20% um, to t the horsemen directly. So we need to have this just figured out on whether they can just come in and tell my, OT, my OTB owners who are like, what's going on? We don't understand any of this. Why can't you have horses? <laughs> you know, why can't this go on as it has always been? Which has always been a benefit to the horsemen, to Turf Paradise, and to us. Everybody wins. So, Okay, we'll be you. studying that. Thank you, Lisa. Mr. Johnson, you're last on the list. Tom Johnson. <laughs> Tom Author, Mr. Director, Commissioners, representing uh, Arizona Downs, and I would like to now introduce uh, Corey Johnson. Well, I'll give you an update on everything. I, I would like to say something briefly. Um, everybody's invited and encouraged to come on up. We're opening up tomorrow our simulcast room. And it looks great. Ann McGovern's done a great job up there. Corey's group has been fantastic, the team he's put together. The horsemen have been great to work with. They've been real cooperative, and we've met with them, and they've been very patient with us with all of our novice questions. And uh, I think we're putting together a good team, and I really look forward to having that opened up. Hope you guys can make it up there. Now? Time's a limo lead, Crystal. 
Yes. Time it gets back. <laughs> My main message to the commission is we really appreciate the efforts of the staff. Whenever you open up a new project, there's a lot of questions and there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And absolutely, without exception, every member of the staff has been very helpful. And it's allowed us to, to open up tomorrow and begin generating revenue for the state and the horsemen. So we're very excited about it. And if there are any questions, I'd be glad to answer those at, at this time. No, I'm, this is. The I didn't realize you guys were going to open up tomorrow, but congratulations. I'm glad to hear that uh, you're moving forward in, in that direction. And I have no questions. No. Roy or Dave, do you guys have any questions? No. Uh, no. Congratulations. Thank you. And, and I've worked with racing commissions all over the country, and this staff is absolutely second to none. And just want to let you know we really appreciate it. We appreciate the job they do too. All right. All right. The next regular Arizona Racing Commission meeting is tentatively scheduled to be held on Thursday, September 13, 2018, at 10 p.m. in the 10 a.m. 10 a.m. This room. It's been a long day. I'm just like this room. Uh, do we have a motion for adjournment? I hear that going this direction. I move we adjourn. Second? I'll second it. Thank you. This, um, okay, Gray? Mr. Gray? Yes. Mr. Heupel? Yes. Mr. Yes. Lawless? Yes. Mr. McClintock? Yes. Okay, motion carries. Time is 1045 a.m.